Hello my soccer universe! Well, I like those mon uh, those international breaks because it makes my Monday morning schedule a whole lot lighter in many, 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 many ways. We'll talk European qualifiers, wearing Bulgaria for a rare win, uh, for a change. I'm very happy about that. But before we go there, very quickly to the South American qualifiers with the big story that the Brazil-Argentina game was stopped after seven minutes because the health authorities took the Argentinian players playing for Premier League clubs off the pitch because they did not put in their immigration forms that they have spent the last few days in the UK. Uh, oh, last few days, I mean, they're playing in the UK. And so they should have been in quarantine because, yeah, it's a monkey world where uh, Great Britain puts Brazil on the red list and in retaliation Brazil puts Great Britain on the red list. And so they would have to quarantine for 14 days. And now there was something like, yeah, maybe the conditions don't apply because of the bubble, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, the health authorities couldn't get to the Argentinian players to put them into quarantine uh, because uh, they were either in a bubble and completely uh, cordoned off or they could get in the locker room because the locker room was locked. I'm wondering, did the Argentinian authorities know, of the Argentinian FA know a little bit about that because they lock it off? In any case, the police helps them get on the pitch, take the players off, game is called off. Now, uh, you can see how, you can definitely see how rational the two sides are dealing with this um, matter. I see no spot for them to replay this match, to be honest, and it will be very, very interesting how things will be going forward uh, with that. I. Although, you know, to me it seems like the most likely thing is that Argentina will have to forfeit the game because of oversight. But, you know, uh, I think everything is open at this point. In the end, I actually think it will not really matter who will uh, progress uh, uh, for progressing to the World Cup or not. So maybe that is the one thing. But, you know, South America. <laughs> it is just, I mean, I, it, it is one of those ridiculous stories that I have the feeling this can only happen in South America. Uh, yeah, maybe. So yeah, let's go back to the boring orderly world of European qualifiers, where to me the overarching team of match day uh, five we have it. So in many ways it is half time, but because of the Nations League it is not really half time. But for me the overarching team a uh, theme um, I cannot talk uh, is that the two champions that we have at the moment from Europe, which is the World, uh, World Cup winners France and the European champions uh, Italy, are kind of drifting a little bit. It is not that they are on a downward turn, but they're drifting. They're not winning, but they're also not losing. So, uh, which is Im important for statisticians in, in uh, terms of Italy. But it's all, it's all going a little bit sideways. And um, yeah. We can start uh, in Group D, uh, the Ukraine-France game. I, 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 I had my focus on another game, but it was the second game I had, had, had on. I was surprised that both teams were playing their way jer jersey, although didn't look bad. Didn't, didn't look better, although I liked the, yeah, uh, the blue against yellow a little bit better. Um, I think it was uh, a good game overall. Where of course France is is the better team, and, and, and so but Ukraine had the better had at least in the first half the better chances. And uh, go ahead, go from Shaparenko. What a great strike it was! Yes, Zuma could have done a little, little, little bit better getting a ball away, but from that distance, I mean, such a sweet hit into the corner. One, one wonderful goal. Then France. Uh, equalized right after half through Martial, who would, I think that there were a few chances. I mean, France definitely had their chances, but it was not a very convincing performance. I actually thought the draw was very well deserved for Ukraine, who get a fifth draw in a row. I mean, talk about drifting side side with Ukraine is going nowhere at the moment, uh, in that sense. And it's even uh, compounded the whole thing because Finland win against Kazakhstan and enter, as, as we'll see, the. Um, um, conversation of who is progressing in this group uh, as well. Uh, we have um, in Group G um, a Norway Turkey winning, and so it was between the Netherlands and Montenegro. Well, uh, the Netherlands it was the Memphis Depay show in Eindhoven 
uh, who completely then dismantled Montenegro and probably the Dutch are finally getting rolling now that they have a proper coach, although maybe he's a little bit outdated already, but they have a proper coach and Louis van Gaal and now the Dutch can actually find uh, their foot foot again. Memphis Depay gets a penalty, I mean that was a, a Greco-Roman wrestling uh, thing and then he scores a second one and then with his his runs he also uh, enables uh, the goals three and especially four uh, through Van Aldum and Hakpo. And so uh, by the 76th minute, it was 4 0. Very, very impressive stuff from the Dutch. Uh, in Group H, also a little bit of a pre decider towards uh, Croatia and Russia, and you see them already. They have done very well in improving their ch ch chances because Russia win against Cy uh, Cyprus and Croatia get a very, very late win over uh, Slovakia. Uh, I think the goal came through Brozovic in the 86th minute, had it in, I mean a game that was rather even, but that win uh, more or less put Slovakia out of the way and uh, Croatia and Russia onto the roll towards the World Cup, uh, World Cup or World Cup playoffs at least. Um, we didn't have Portugal playing, uh, so uh, Ireland only manages a 1-1 against Azerbaijan. That was a little bit disappointing, one has to say. Serbia, though, has no trouble with Luxembourg, with Mitrovic uh, being the outstanding man, scoring two first-half goals. Um, and uh, seemingly getting a third, but it wasn't an own, own goal. Uh, in, in, in between, Thiel had uh, pulled a goal back for Lux Luxembourg. It was always going to be... Um, Ser uh, Serbia Milenkovic in the end gets the winner. It's four. Uh, it's a four for one, and that puts Serbia right on track. Also, maybe for first place stop and we first place spot, and then we will have to uh, have a big game between Portugal and Ser Serbia probably for the direct qualifier. Group F. I talked a whole lot about Israel. Also, I'm not gonna lose any more words. If you want, here is. The video on, on 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 that and my anger on on that are uh, disgraceful, absolute disgraceful, and yeah, heads should roll all over the place there. Uh, Denmark, a little bit of a, if, I don't want to say a lucky win, but you know, uh, it was nil for a very long time. Wind had a goal disallowed for offside in the first half, and then but he gets his goal then um, late, late, late in the 85th minute. And so the Danes still have not conceded, are uh, still winning and are uh, very much on the way to the World Cup. Scotland, um, at least this puts to me a little bit the result that Austria against Moldova a little bit in perspective because Scotland only made it a 1-0 against Moldova. However, they had uh, numerous chances maybe to make it a, a little bit more as well. Goal came very, very early. Uh, then we already yesterday's action where uh, Belarus and Wales played in Kazan and not in the arena where the World Cup was played, but in uh, <laughs> probably the old stadium of Rubin. Um, it was the perfect game because Wales win 3-2 by being first up, then down and then up again. There uh, was also many penalties. Uh, Bale scores two via penalty and then uh, Lizakovic and Zetko uh, scores the equalizer with the penalty. And then Zetko uh, is a minute later set, set up to give uh, Belarus a 2-1 half, half time lead. However, as I said, another penalty and a stoppage time winner by uh, Bale. Sets uh, Wales on a good path maybe to snatch the second spot because Belgium in Lukaku's 100th game have no problem of disposing of the checks. Uh, especially first half, Lukaku very early on gets uh, his goal to kind of celebrate his 100th uh, cap in style. Uh, Hans Van Aken score, uh, e, uh, assisting the first two, two goals. First, a uh, nice pass to Lukaku and then uh, back heel to Azar. Uh, maybe the goal, it did not look all that good. Um, Vajlek had to come off. Uh, the regular goal, goalkeeper already in the 14th minute. Uh, after the half, the Czechs had two pretty good, good chances that were um, by Courtois swatted off and then the third goal by Salamakers is one of, is in the builder play the sweetest goal that, can, that shows you all the class of this Belgium team where Azar backs heels it uh, to Lukaku with the Al, who with the side of his back heel then into Salamakers path who had just come on a few minutes earlier and makes it 3-0. Very happy for, Sal for Salamakers Milan player and so Belgium cruising away. I already said uh, Bulgaria gets a rare win, 1-0 uh, over Lithuania, very late, late, late goal. Um, I saw most of the second half, 
uh, Georgev uh, had it in of a death ball of a free kick, death ball of Trudev actually had a goal a little bit earlier when he was running f uh, free ahead to, to hold the goalie, but uh, finally Bulgaria get a win and yeah, hope they go on. Switzerland Italy was the game I watched, and I have to say, despite the scoreline, this was an thoroughly enthralling game. What actually helped is that although this was played in Basel, I mean, there were at least 30 if not 40 percent Italians in there. You could, uh, and, and, and they were all mixed, so it was, uh, it was a very um, electric atmosphere throughout the game. Italy largely dominant, but not very sharp up front. Uh, that was the one thing, oh, oh, in general, I mean, you could see a little bit um, uh, I, I, I'd have to say a little bit lethargy, yeah, we have won the baby because a little bit uh, this tension is falling off, but they were still, uh, especially at first half, largely the better team. A uh, wonderful pass by Lo Ocatelli Separati on the way, uh, free on to all of the goal, but Jan Sommer could save it, although I think the Perradi also a teeny bit panicked there because I think if he composes himself, he can get a very well uh, pass him. But, it was the Jan Sommer show. Jan Sommer was saving uh, chances le 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 left and right. I mean, uh, especially they were uh, they twice tried to either um, uh, a free kick that was close to the touchline or a core kick that twice tried to do it directly in. He got that. Uh, he swatted the chance, especially the second half by Insigne, and most importantly. A clear penalty that was given for Jorginho uh, uh, was war was given for a foul. Who was it on? I think it was Berardi, uh, Ro Rodriguez. And I saw Jorginho and I th thought, I would rather have Immobile here because he just yanks it in. Uh, Immobile did not have a great game overall, but if I think about Jorginho, because Jan Sommer, I know he studies. You saw it or already. I mean, he saved twice on Ramos, who is a very good pair pair taker. Uh, so Jorginho, who uh, tries to catch the goalkeeper of of guard, but then the shot is never a hard shot, and therefore it's an easy save. And and, and you can see Jan Sommer a run up. He is not moving. He even offers a little bit the one hand, uh, the one side, and uh, puts Jorginho off on the other. And then it's a rather easy save because Jorginho just rolls the ball in and that's, yeah. Uh, at that moment, moment, I knew Italy is probably not going to score there, although uh, Insigne twice tried, I mean, with a deflected shot where Jan Sommer again makes a great save. But then uh, the longer the game went, the more Switzerland came up and it could very well have been um, that Switzerland also could, could have scored. If, as I said, it ended nil-nil, but this was a highly entertaining and tense game. With ending it nil-nil, Italy is now 36 games at least unbeaten, which is a new world record. However, what that result to me means is that Italy probably will need to, in the next uh, window, beat Switzerland at home to have um, to have it fully in control that they will go to the World Cup. Switzerland have yet to uh, drop points outside of that game against it Italy. So uh, there could be some trouble for Italy as well. Uh, they still look comfortable. Still look comfortable, but there is, there is a must-win game. You uh, and they avoided disaster in a sense because if they would have lost this game, they would have found themselves in a similar situation as Spain. So um, have that in mind. No, the next international break they have to play the Nations League final four. So have uh, that. This is then in November. So maybe maybe by, by that time they can get rolling again. Uh, in Group I, um, Hungary losing to Albania, pretty big loss, I have to say. Uh, England. Playing the B team, Jesse Lingard uh, scoring is going to goal. It took a while, and I think until the big boys came on, came on that it, the score then became the 4 0. Um, it was weird to see Kane scoring with number 20 because Bamford was playing with 9. Kind of in, in, interesting. Poland San Marino, 7 1. Uh, most notable, San Marino scored. For them, this is already a biggie. Uh, and then, what's more, Lewandowski scored 2. But he was outdone uh, by second half substitute Buxer, who scored a hat trick then. So, uh, but two of them came in stoppage time. So, I mean, the game proper was a little bit tighter for most of the time. Iceland North Macedonia 2 2. Germany roaring back with a 6 0 against Armenia. I mean, this was uh, one way traffic in the first first half. This was an Armenia team that had done really, 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 really well. 
so 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 far about totally outclass and you finally saw George Germany really enjoying themselves. Gnabry in the first 15 minutes scores two goals, um, then Marco Reus in the 35th and Timo Werner um, make it really really clear. Then they take off a little bit uh, uh, the pace. Uh, the Hofmann after he scores in 52nd and then uh, Timo Werner had a goal to the Salon Adeyemi in stoppage time. Adeyemi from Salzburg. Uh, makes it 6-0 very, very, very uh, impressive. And probably the right, the right goal in a, in a game that was uh, in memory of Gerd Müller. I thought this uh, seems the same thing to part, but right. And then uh, we go to uh, Group B. Any hopes that Spain would have that Greece could give uh, Sweden a fight? I think the 1-1 against Kosovo is rather dis 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 disappointing for Greece. And so Spain, uh, they got an impressive win over Georgia. But again, they don't control the destiny any anymore. Gaia, Soler and Ferran Torres in the first half uh, scoring the goals and then Sarabia getting a fourth one. Now, before we go to next uh, games, I don't want to comment too much now on the expected stand standings. I just uh, want to show them to you here for the next few, uh, for, for, for the next minute or so. Coming games on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. I think, uh, I mean, it looks good. Austria, Scotland, I'm not gonna watch it. The big one is Netherlands, Turkey. That is probably uh, whoever wins that one has a clear path to the, the, to, to the World Cup. Let, let, let's see if the Dutch can actually get something going. Uh, France, Finland is an intriguing matchup. Um, other than that, I mean, Croatia probably will have to uh, make up for the loss to Slovenia early on. Uh, then I don't see anything big here in North Macedonia, Romania. Maybe if they want to get back um, Greece, Sweden, I think is a pretty big game. Um, Italy just needs to win, as probably does Switzerland. Um, I am watching at Poland, England. That's another big, big one. If Poland wants to have any chance of progressing, they need to beat England in that one and I think yeah I mean it, it's a little bit of a downward it's not as big but I think the um, that uh, Netherlands Turkey game that's a pretty huge huge one also also Poland England I think there is something good in there as well so that was it for me for the World Cup qualifiers we are more or less just getting started. I think October will be hot because not only do we have the Nations League Final Four, but this also means that some we get a little bit more even standings then and that might put some teams a little bit into trouble. Or maybe not, if other teams drop points. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to date with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.